Hey guys, I missed my notebook and smart board so bad that I snuck into the school to make this video. I'm just kidding, this is actually just a MacBook and I'm sitting in the dining room making this video because we can't leave the house. I'm not this pretentious. So here's where we are so far. We've got, um, we've done three activities. You're hopefully about to do a fourth. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page before we go on. Um, so, gosh, I hope this works. If you um, remember activity one, we found out that charged objects were defined as stuff that picks up paper bits. And you rub stuff with fur, you rub stuff with fleece, oh my gosh, it picks up paper bits. Some things do and some things don't. Um, Hopefully you notice that the kinds of things that become charged tend to be like things like the foam pad or plastic. Um, things that don't become charged tend to be things that were made out of metal. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, then you found out there were actually two different ways to be charged. Or two dis different charged conditions. And because we made them out of pieces of tape, um, we said, hey, look, um, the top piece of tape was charged one way, so we called that T-charged. And the bottom piece of tape was charged another way, so we called that B-charged. And then we found out that um, if we put two things together, two T-charged tapes will repel each other. A B and a T-tape will attract each other. And a B and a B-tape repel each other. So now we've got a couple different things. We say, hey, charged things attract paper bits, which um, hopefully you understand those are uncharged things. So a charged object will attract uncharged objects, but then when you bring two charged objects together, you can get repulsion or attraction depending on what kinds of charges you have. So that's um, kind of the first couple of activities. And then the third activity, the big, big idea is, hey, if you want to know what kind of charge an object has, you just need these T and the B tapes. So if you know something's charged and it attracts T, then you know that it's B charged. If you know something's charged and it repels E, then you know that it's B charged. An interesting kind of thing here is that if you have, if you see two objects that are unknown and they attract each other, if all you see is attraction, can you determine if one or both objects are charged? So what conclusion can you draw, or what claim can you make? Versus if you see repulsion, can you make an, another claim? So hopefully you'll say, um, hopefully you guys understand if you see attraction between two objects, then the claim that we can make is that at least one of those two objects is charged, for sure. If we see repulsion, we can actually say, hey, look, both objects are charged. And even more, you can say they have the same type of charge. So they're either both B charged or both T charged. Um, which means you can, you can tell more by seeing repulsion than you can from seeing attraction. Um, what I want you to do over the weekend is write me a conclusion. It's kind of a combination conclusion for activities one through four altogether. And you're gonna to have to come up with something kind of on your own. Um, of course, you can you know, <clears throat> get online with your friends, get on whatever, um, whatever messaging, group messaging type app that you have. Um, talk to your friends about this and try and figure out how is it possible, right? You take, you take um, an object, you rub it with fur, And you start out not charged, and then you end up charged. Okay, um, or you take two pieces of tape. Here's my combo tape, and this is not charged. So you start with nothing, and just by ripping them apart you end up with two pieces of tape that are something. So you get something from nothing. Not only do you get something from nothing, you get two different kinds of something from nothing. 
you get a T charge tape, and you get a B charge tape. Okay, so that's what you're trying to explain. Is see if you can come up with a model of understanding um, that kind of tells you how do you start with with nothing, right, and end up with two different somethings, and that's um, your homework for Monday.